Hello traders, how are you doing today? Going live on Instagram, just like I try to do every Friday. Hope you're doing good. Hope your trading day was successful. I really had fun today. In fact, uh, my whole week is uh, just absolutely amazing. Started my week uh, kind of slow with a few hundred dollars on Monday, about one thousand dollars on Tuesday, and then it went up to three grand, six grand, and another three something today. So I'm going to finish my week up fifteen thousand dollars, which makes it a very nice week for me. Hope you did well too. End game for the week is um, more than my average. My average would be fifteen grand in. Uh, actually more than two weeks my average my average month is actually something like twenty thousand dollars so having 15 or so in a week was really amazing so had a very nice week hope you guys enjoyed your week too so we're here in order for you guys to ask me questions if there are any questions you want me to answer i'll be very happy to answer and um, I only answer the first few questions that comes along. And I do have one question for you too. And the first one is going to answer my question is going to get a $250 voucher uh, to trade net. And with a $250 voucher to trade net, you can go a long way. The reason for that is because we are having our most amazing ever sale going on right now fact is you can join us for 350 dollars now get education and a funded fourteen thousand dollar account which you can trade from home and get to share the profits so the thing is with 350 dollars even if you don't win today it's a great opportunity and um, i think that uh, you guys uh, definitely should join that i'll ask uh, Clifton and Gabe is going to help me out today uh, to post the link, so you're going to have that. But um, once uh, this um, broadcast is over, you can probably look for it and swipe up and join us for this just absolutely amazing. Just one uh, last thing before I answer your questions. You do remember that we're starting the world's largest ever trading competition next week. It starts on the 28th and there's more than 3,000 people who joined it. And it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be amazing. I hope it's going to be amazing. But it's going to be a great competition. I hope you guys signed up because it's not impossible to sign up anymore. Uh, could sign up until the 16th, but right now it's too late. And it's going to start on... Um, on the 28th next week and it's just absolutely amazing first price is a two hundred and forty thousand dollar account that's almost a quarter of a million dollars and then it goes down 10 prices i mean last price is fourteen thousand dollar account and it's just amazing it's going to be really interesting hope you guys uh signed up uh the one you should know if you signed up that you were accepted or not i don't know i mean you should get an email uh, some countries the wrong can't join, like countries who can't trade CFDs. And if I got you right, I'm not sure that you can join. Or if you do, sadly, you can only win, but you cannot get the price. I guess you know what I'm talking about. But let's go back and see if you had any questions today. I think I saw some. Okay. Hold on. I'm coming to there. If you didn't yet post your question, you can post questions. I'm here to answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can you scalp on TradeNet? Yes, sure you can. Uh, you can scalp on TradeNet, uh, depending on what you call scalping. You know, there's a big difference between scalping for a few cents. You know, if you try to scalp for a few cents, meaning uh, anywhere between uh, one to three, four, five cents, no, you can't. We don't encourage that. But if you call scalping 10 or 20 cents or something like that, 
You definitely can do that. The reason we don't encourage that is because I personally don't do that and because I don't believe in that. The thing is about TradeNet, and you should know, we only do things that I personally support. Sorry, I'm the boss. And I'm saying this because I know how people are losing money. If you're trying to scalp for a few cents, you're going to lose your money. We don't want you to lose money. We want good reputation. We want people who love us. We want people who stay with us. We want people who get successful. So we don't allow penny stocks. We don't allow you to scalp. We don't allow you to, depending what you call scalping, okay? As I mentioned, just a few cents? No. Uh, you want to go for more than this? Go ahead. I, go, I, I myself take 20, 30 cents. Um, some people call it scalps. How do you manage max loss a day versus max profit a day? Okay, good point. I'll start with that uh, question. My max loss a day is usually, well, let me tell you this. I have a very important rule. If I have three consecutive loss, losing trades, I'm out of the day, out of the game. So my max loss per trade could be uh, approximately $3,000. If I have three consecutive loss, then I'm out of the game. And that means my max loss per day, and that could be like a disaster. And I don't remember, when, I mean, the last time it happened to me was many months ago, three consecutive losing trades. And I would probably finish at around seven, eight, nine thousand dollars $9,000 max loss. And that may happen. If I have three losing trades, the first thing that comes into my mind is that I want to remain trading. I want to continue trading because I want to get back to green. And I know you guys have uh, went through this game many times, but this is a very important rule. I never continue because I'm mentally not fit to continue trading once I'm at three losing trades, consecutive losing trades. If I get a winner after two losers, I'll keep on trading. But usually my max loss would be around five grand. And my good days would also be at around five game, five thousand dollars. Like yesterday, I was up six thousand three hundred, I believe, end game. Uh, but uh, so it was a little bit better than my average. But my average, well, my average is much lower than that. My average is two thousand something average, including losing days. But my worst trading day would, I mean, my 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 max loss day would be at around five grand. However, if I have three consecutive losing trades, I'll be more than that. And then I manage my losing my max loss days according to my average uh, win days. So that would probably, should probably be approximately the same. And that depends on you, personally, on you. I think that uh, any trade that you're taking, and I, we have discussed this in here in the past, every trade that you're taking, you shouldn't be losing more than one to 2% of your capital every trade you take. I'm not going to get into this. We talked about it uh, before. So every trade you take, you shouldn't be losing more than 1% up to up to 2%. So it should stay more in the range of one average, maybe one to two, one, 1 1.2. So two would be the worst case per trade. So if I would say that your average is, let's say 1.2% loss per trade, then three trades, would be 3.6% or so. So any, anywhere between three to 4% should be your max loss per day, in my opinion. Hope I answered your question. How long did it take me to become consistent? You know, when I started trading, I made all the foolish mistakes which are in the book. I did not learn. I just opened an account. I was just doing whatever I thought was right to do, which turned out to be a very foolish mistake. I started learning close to a year after I started doing that. And so I, I can't say that in the first year I didn't learn anything. Surely I learned. I learned a lot in the first year. I learned how to lose in the first year, which <laughs> may be the most important part in trading. So I learned a lot in the first year, but I probably missed the opportunity to learn in a um, good, uh, in the right way. Now, I stopped losing money after a year and a half. So approximately six months after I started my education. 
but you can't say it's just six months because even though I was losing money in the first year, that was also some kind of an education. So I would say I stopped losing money, let's say about a year from when I started learning. I mean, if I would look at it in a bit different way. And, but I did not notice that I was making money regularly until approximately two years. So I got my first education at around a year. And then a year afterwards, I only noticed that I was making money. What is the difference between not losing money and noticing? Because, you know, even if you stop losing money, and I stopped losing money after 18 months, even if you stop losing money, it's hard to notice that you will not stop losing money because you may have a good month and a bad month and a good month and a bad month. And after like four or five months, you look back and say, well, I had some bad months, I had some good months, but um, my average is like zero. That means stop losing money, but that you can only see probably three, four months after you stop losing money. And I only noticed that at approximately six months after losing money, after stopping losing money, that it was clear to me that I was making money. So I started making money after two years, from which I didn't get education in one year. So after two years, years I only noticed I'm starting to make money. So I could say I became consistently profitable and of course I had my losing months and of course I didn't I wasn't very clearly consistent but if I look back I would say after two years I became a consistent uh, trader making money have I always loved uh, going shorting yes from day one tell you why listen Hussein it's very important I tell you all guys shorting is the best opportunity for traders. That's your best opportunity. There's several reasons for that. First reason, most people don't know how to short. If you stop a person in the street and you ask him, what is shorting all about? Most people won't know. If you ask a trader or an investor what shorting is all about, 90% of them will know. Yes, they would know what is shorting. But if you ask the average person who's investing slash trading if he ever shorted the stock or he doesn't know or he doesn't have any experience in shorting stocks 90 percent of the people will tell you no they don't know and i include investors too and most people out there are investors not traders we are a very small part of the investing industry most of the people in the market the ones that you buy and sell for the ones you find on level two on the other side are investors, not trading, not traders. And most of them never shorted the stock. 90% of them have no idea about what to do. So that's the first advantage you have. The advantage you have is that you're alone out there. Guys, the money lies where most of the people don't know what to do. If everybody knows how to sweep a street for living, then the payment for that would be very low. If everybody knows how to, I don't know, uh, wait on you on a restaurant, then you can't get much income by being a waiter. But if everybody, if most everybody doesn't know how shorting works like, don't have experience in shorting, that's where the money lies. The money lies where most people don't know how to do it. And of course, short goes better because stocks are coming down much faster than they do. Um, by approximately 80% faster than going up, stocks are coming down. And that's because greed is not as good as fear. Fear works much, much better than greed. So definitely go for shorts. If you know your way around shorts, if you develop your strategies, I would definitely tell you, first develop your shorting strategy. If you've got a good shorting strategy, that will take you all the way. I'm not saying don't go long. I certainly go long. I certainly find my long opportunities, but shorting would be much, much better than going long. Much better. I'm looking for more questions here yeah i agree the competition is going to be an amazing opportunity 
There's so, going to be 10 winners, guys. There's going to be 10 winners who's going to get accounts with more than $1 million. Do you get this? It never happened in the world. It's the first time it happens. What do you mean by five digit IPOs? I don't know what you mean by five digit, digit IPO, Daniel. I'm sorry, I didn't get that question. I would love to answer that, but I didn't get the question. What are five digit IPOs? Sorry, I need to move to the next question. How much is my monthly profit, Jimmy? It's on my YouTube channel. Every year I show my monthly, actually every day. Every day I, I share my, my, my profit. But if you want to see how much I make per year, the average would be around 250 grand. But uh, it's, on my, it's on my YouTube channel. You probably should go there and look for my videos, look for my annual whatever. Last year, of course, was posted 2018 and you'll find plenty of years before that on my YouTube channel. Uh, no, I don't trade uh, Forex. The reason why I don't trade Forex is because I failed. I failed trading Forex. I tried trading Forex. I failed. And trading Forex, in my opinion, is much, much harder than trading stocks. We have discussed this last time when we were talking here about the difference between Forex and and, and stocks. And I will not continue my this discussion now because you can go back and... Uh, now, this discussion was recorded and it's on my YouTube channel. You can take a look at that. But I don't trade Forex because I think Forex trading is much, much harder than trading stocks. But I think that um, um, there's money in, in trading Forex only if you wait for uh, news. So if you trade news-related issues, you can make money in Forex. The problem is they don't come all the time. And people who are trading Forex are just clicking their way through their account. I mean, they're making mistakes just because they're overclicking. And when you overclick because you, you have nothing sometimes in Forex, unlike stocks where you have something going on at all times, really at all times, if you want to click, click stocks. I mean, your chance in winning is going to be much better. But if you want to get the whole story about why you probably should go to our YouTube channel and listen to the previous questions that were asked about this because we discussed that in length. Uh, do I use uh, indicators, Jimmy? Yes, I do use indicators. You know, tell you what, when you're trading, you should be using a lot of indicators like moving averages, Fibonacci. I personally prefer using VWAP, Volume Weight Average Price which is, in my opinion, the most important indicator because it shows you what the institutional traders are doing and they are 80% of the volume out there. You should know what they're doing at all times. So VWAP is most important. About the rest of the indicators, if you watch my videos, you won't see anymore. You won't see moving averages. And it's not because I don't need them. It's just because they are already embedded in my mind. Guys, I've been trading for almost 20 years now. In a few months, it's going to be 20 years. These indicators are embedded in my mind. Seriously, when I'm watching charts, I don't need my moving averages. Do my students need them? Absolutely, yes, you do. If you trade without moving averages, that's how to trade. You need moving averages. So watch moving averages. Watch other indicators. All are important. Many are important. Find a system that works with your indicators. Do I need them? Yes, I do. But it's embedded in my mind. The only one I want to see in my charts because there's, when there's too many indicators, it's like looking at too, much, too many lines and I don't like that. But yes, indicators are very, very important. Uh, do I think that time is elementary that influences the market? Do you mean like in once you're into a trade? Is time important? Absolutely, yes. If that was your question. If that was not, I'm sorry. But if that was your question, absolutely, yes. If you're into a trade and the trade does not go as you expected it to go, then you're at the point of a gambler. You're at the point where 
you know, you hope it's going to continue. So time is very important. Usually when I get into a trade, I like to see a quick move into my target or at least stock showing me the, you know, its willingness to move in my direction. But when it's just going sideways, then you get to the point where you know more, you know better than a gambler. I mean, will it go up? Will it come down? It could. Then you still have 50%, right? But at 50%, you could go to Las Vegas and, you know, trade on the black or red at the roulette. <laughs> You'll get the same chance. I mean, why would you trade stocks and pay commission? So you can do the same in Las Vegas. And over there in Las Vegas, you get free drinks and uh, beautiful girls who give you the drinks. And uh, you don't get any drinks in, in this Instagram broadcast or in my trading room. So uh, if you want to gamble, Las Vegas is better. Time is an essence. Time is very important. If you look at, if you trade a stock and it's not going your way, the best you can do is reduce your size. Now, if you're more than human, which is very hard, uh, then you can you can move out altogether. I find it very hard. I, I'm saying, I'm, listen, to what I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you you should move out of trade, but I can't do it myself because I'm already emotionally involved. Like if I'm shorting a stock, I think it's going to come down. It's just going sideways. I should move out, but I'm emotionally involved. I want to have that winner and it actually didn't go wrong. It just didn't go the right way too. So the way I solve it is I'm reducing my size dramatically. Like if I would start with, let's say 1000 shares, I would reduce 600 and I still get to keep the 400. I still get to keep the 400. And then, and I'm telling you, it's the wrong thing to do. <laughs> so why don't I go out of the whole 1,000? I thought it's going to go right. It still has a chance to go. I like to keep a small part just in case it will. I mean, mentally thinking, it helps me. And you know, being trading, the mental part about trading is what's important. And if it mentally keeps me a little bit more healthy, then it's probably right for me. Is it wrong? Yes. Small size, I keep. If you are a little bit, uh, if you have a bit more discipline than I do, and I don't think I'm the most disciplined person out there. I, I do good, but I'm not the most disciplined person I've, you, you've met. So that would be uh, important. Guys, um, we are at the part where I finish answering your questions. And sorry, because I know you asked, asked, ask more questions here. But at this part, I want you to answer my question. And if you will, you're going to get a $250 voucher for TradeNet. So here comes the part. Uh, listen up. First person who's going to give me a right full answer is going to get a $250 voucher. And we've got uh, our team here who's waiting to see who you who gives us the first uh, right, correct question, answer. And um, again, $250 goes a long way today because we still have our uh, amazing sale of the year. At $350, you can join us, get education, access to my trading room, and a live $14,000 account. So you can get a $250 voucher by answering my following question. Listen up and start writing only when you have the full answer. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything. Right? Here we go. My question is the following. I need you to write only three symbols. Only three symbols. The symbols I want you to write down are um, three letter symbols of um, an indice that I'm going to mention right now. I want you to mention the, um, the traded indice, like the ETF. I want you to mention the um, the, 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 the symbol of, of, 
of, of the, I mean, the indices symbol which you cannot trade, it will soon be clear, and the futures indices, and the futures symbol. Uh, the futures is a two letter, and the rest are three letters. And here comes a question. You need to write down the NASDAQ. Please start answering. NASDAQ futures, NASDAQ traded symbol, which is the ETF, and the NASDAQ symbol, which is just the one you follow. If you want to watch the NASDAQ, the untraded symbol. I hope my question was clear. I'm sure I'm going to get the answers. The full answer, please. The full answer, please. Not just one. I see one answer here. It's not enough. The full answer. I need three symbols. Three symbols. Comma between them. You guys are just answering one. No. Three symbols. Three. One for the futures. One for the traded, which is the ETF. And the third one is the one that you're watching. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. I didn't think it's going to be so hard. I thought it's going to be much easier. No. No. Oh, come on, guys. I was sure it's going to be like the easiest question I ever asked you. Almost. No, come on. I can't believe it. There was one question there which was almost right. No. No. Oh, seriously. No. Close again. We've got a winner. We've got a winner. Yeah, we have a winner. Finally. I thought it's going to be a simple question. Our, the answer is... Uh, <laughs> the answer is... The traded symbol is the QQQ. The CTF. The futures is the MQ. And the one you're watching but you cannot trade is the NDX. And the first guy who answered that is uh, Philly F-Z-H-U. And Philly goes like P-H-I-L-Y. So Philly F-Z-H-U, my congratulations. I did not think it's going to be a hard question. Seriously. Please contact our uh, support um, support here you've got a $250 voucher guys don't forget we have a huge sale right now you can swipe up this and uh, get your way through our system with $350 <laughs> yeah please uh, email uh, Clifton here uh, Philly uh, you've got uh, Clifton's email right here at the bottom just uh, use this email and Clifton uh, will be very, very happy to assist you to get the $250. Guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy your weekend. And I'll see you here next week. And of course, in our YouTube channel, which is a live online trading room. It was fun. Hope you enjoy your weekend. And um, I'll see you next week. Thank you for participating. Thank you very much.